Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's exclusive analysis. In today's video, we're we'll discussing Tesla, Apple, some individual technology stocks, and the XLK and QQQ ETF itself. So starting with Tesla because it is a fan favorite. Obviously, most people have been pretty bearish with this big sell-off and break. Tesla today did hit this white moving average. That is the 100 daily moving average, and you got a pretty sweet, terrific bounce off of this area. Now, what else can we deduce from this potential pattern? Well, first off, let's just bring your attention to this breakout zone. Why did Tesla also bounce? Not only did you have the 100 daily moving average, but you also had the retrace to the breakout zone. So pivot to your consolidation breakout. This is your back test. This area needs to hold on Tesla. If this area holds on Tesla, what we could be forming is a much, much larger inverse head and shoulders pattern. As you can see on the chart, you have this left shoulder, you have your head, your inverse head, and you have your potential right shoulder development happening. Now, Tesla was able to bounce even when the interest rate, the yield environment was absolutely ripping today, as well as the US dollar, which is a very, very positive sign. Tesla is generally very, very sensitive to the higher rate environment, and this was a little bit of a change in character. Rates arguably had one of its biggest moves since we've seen the sell-off, and Tesla was still able to eke out of gain. Now, maybe this is just a short-term oversold bounce, but perhaps it's also a little bit of a turning point in the market. If we were to measure this pattern, if this, if this does play out to be an inverse head and shoulders pattern, basically the area that we can expect Tesla to move up to is 313.314. Why do I think that's actually a likely scenario? Well, let's take a look at the XLK. So the XLK ETF is the technology ETF. You know, there's some NVIDIA holdings, Apple holdings, Microsoft, and a few other tech names, but this is still the largest weighting in the overall S&P 500. And to date, it's still up 32.12%. Over the last month, the XLK is down 2%. 0.09%. So we have gone through a little bit of a consolidation phase. Now on the daily chart, we are hitting some pretty decent support. As you can see, or let me just flip to the weekly chart. You can clearly see on the XLK, we're into this previous pivot resistance over here, resistance over here, bounce area, bounce area, and now it looks to be that the market is trying to bounce there. But what I want to bring to your attention is there's only ever been, this is the third time in history where you've had, in the XLK ETF, you've had a bullish crossover of the purple moving average, which is the 50, and the 100 weekly moving average, which is the white line over here, white moving average line. So we just had a bullish cross earlier in September, a couple weeks ago, and the market sold off. That is the technical picture that generally happens once you get a bullish cross of a moving average. Most people pile in on the long side expecting this crossover to yield higher price action and then market makers take it down. Now that a couple weeks of selling has transpired, if you look what generally has happened the past two times that this has happened, and let me be clear, this is now the only the third time in XLK price history that we've seen this bullish crossover. So let's take you back to when the areas did happen. Here you had a kiss of the two moving averages. There was never a full official cross, but you had a kiss of the moving average and look at the rally that ended up ensuing. A massive, massive ripping alley. But that's the that doesn't really count because it wasn't an official cross. Here you had a cross of the moving average. And just like market makers and participants were expecting the bullish cross to yield results, market makers sold it off, the cross happens, and then look what proceeded. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks, almost 10 weeks of consecutive upside occurred after the bullish crossover. That ultimately led to a higher high in the XLK before you saw a little bit of a sell-off that you took you back down to where the cross pretty much happened. And then the market ended up rallying. So net-net, it yielded positive results for about a 10-week span before you had a little bit of a sell-off and then you ended up making higher highs on the chart. Let's go to the other, the first time that it actually happened on the weekly chart. This was after the dot-com crash. So what's interesting about this is you had the bullish cross right around here, December uh, 2003. You actually had one, two, three, four, about five weeks of higher price action. You made that higher high in the trend, and then you sold off back down to the 50 weekly 
moving average before you ended up bouncing and trending a little bit lower. And then ultimately you did end up making higher highs a few years later. But all in all, the common trend once you get this bullish cross of the 50 and the 100 is you get generally five to 10 weeks of upside in the overall technology ETF. Now, if this is the case, what's so intriguing about this is you're hammering on the support. This bounce would likely give us a little bit of a higher high or test this double top. And then you look at the pattern and say like Tesla, it should play out that this inverse head and shoulders on the daily and weekly chart should play out to this 312, 313 level. Even if you look at Apple, there's been a couple times on the weekly chart where we've had this similar bullish cross. Look at this, you had this crossover or this kiss, Apple had significant upside, then a bigger, deeper pullback to the 50 weekly moving average. Same thing over here. Apple had this bullish crossover of the 50 and the 100. You yielded a few weeks of upside, a little bit of a pullback, sideways chop, more higher highs, higher highs, pullback to the 50. All in all, the theme when you have this bullish crossover is that you get higher price action in the coming weeks before you get a little bit of a deeper correction back to the 50 weekly moving average. So what can we expect in terms of the XLK? Well, if we're using history as a guide, we could expect maybe some sort of a, let me just find my drawing tool here. We could expect some sort of a rally to maybe test this double top, make a high. And then once this moving average is a little bit higher, we could come right back down to this original support zone. So that's kind of what the history and technicals are showing in the price action. And it's just really, really intriguing to me as to how things are setting up, specifically when you look to the put to call ratio. Right now, we are pretty much at a higher put ratio. Basically, the market participants are betting on the short side that this market is going to dump out. And like a rubber band, we historically know when all market, when most market participants are crowded on the wrong one side, it tends to snap back like a rubber band. Let's just look at some of the other uh, tech stocks here. Amazon, for instance, had a beautiful gain up 1.67%. Amazon is basically um, looking to, to basically hold this little bit of a weekly 100 moving average. There is a chance that Amazon can come test this area, but being the fact that Amazon is also potentially putting in what looks to be an inverse head and shoulder. Here you have your deep left shoulder. Here you have your head, your big rounding head. If this forms a right shoulder or a little bit of a cup and handle formation, that could back up the thesis that the XLK and QQQ, NASDAQ tech heavy sector, is likely going to move higher. Really the one stock that we also have to pay attention to, of course, that everybody is watching is NVIDIA. NVIDIA got that bearish close as of Friday last week below the neckline triggering this potential head and shoulders. As of today, if we pinpoint and draw this precision neckline as close as we can, let me use this pivot here, you can see that Nvidia closed basically right on that neckline. So we can't call it a negation of this pattern, but at the same time, there was some strength that occurred in Nvidia today, which this is a bellwether name. And as we approach earnings cycles, most of the mega cap tech companies have revised earnings to the upside, which should yield positive results for the stocks in the coming sessions. So again, to conclude things on this final note, if we look at XLK, you're hammering on this pretty big support area. You also have had bullish crosses of the moving average, which historically has only happened three times as of September 11th. And typically when you, this does happen, you get a several five to 10 weeks of upside before you see a little bit of a deeper pullback to the 50 weekly moving average. Will history align itself again with previous price action? They often say history doesn't rhyme, but it often, sorry, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. So we will have to pay attention to closely if that does. And if you look at the NNDX over here, there is also still a potential formation of this right shoulder development to occur. If that does happen, this likely means that the NASDAQ and tech heavy sector tests this double top or even makes a little bit of a double top new all time high pierce. On that note, please check out our website at tradingcapital.ca and definitely give this video a big like or comment down below. If you disagree with the analysis, please share all of your opinions. 
because we're all just trying to learn and make money in this market. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you on the charts.